Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel that is Vipin Sharma Biology Tutorials and today we are learning a very important and a very requested topic that is Molecular Basis of Inheritance. So let's start Molecular Basis of Inheritance. So first of all we should understand the term genetics, the meaning of term genetics because the molecular basis of inheritance comes under molecular genetics. So genetics as we know that is the study of inheritance plus variation. So what is inheritance? Inheritance is the passing of characters from parents to offsprings that is parents to children. Inheritance is the passing of characters, different characters of parents from parents to offspring and variation is the degree is the degree by which the parents are differing from the offsprings. It means the degree of difference or the degree of variations between offspring and parents is known as variations that how much they are differing with each other according to mendel gregor john mendel who is the father of genetics there are some factors which are transmitted from parents to offspring which are passing on the characters so according to mendel factors are responsible for the transmission of characters from parents to offspring which are now called as genes and the term genes is given by Johansson. So the factor term is given by Mendel and the genes term is given by Johansson and both of these are same but at that particular time or at the time of Mendel the term genes were not discovered. So he called it factors. So there are some factors which are transmitting or transmitted from parents to offspring which are simply called as factor in Mendelian language and genes in modern terms given by Johansson. So as you know that the most suitable most appropriate genetic material is DNA. As DNA is present as a genetic material in most of the organisms. In most of the organisms the genetic material is DNA. Why it is genetic material in most of the organisms? Because it is more stable than RNA. Why it is more stable? We will discuss it a little bit later. So DNA is genetic material in most of the organisms and nucleic acid. It means deoxyribonucleic acid. Since it is a nucleic acid, it is formed up of different monomers that is known as nucleotide. The nucleotide polymerizes to form nucleic acid. So, since in this particular genetic material, the sugar is deoxyribose. The deoxyribose sugar is present here. That's why it is known as deoxyribonucleic acid, which is the genetic material in most of the organisms which are formed up of the polymerization of nucleotides, not nucleosides. It is nucleotides. So, nucleotide is the polymer of nucleic acid. It's the monomer of nucleic acid which polymerizes to form nucleic acid. The nucleic acid is of two types that is deoxyribonucleic acid in which deoxyribose is sugar and ribose nucleic acid in which ribose is sugar. So why DNA is more stable? We are talking about it. In ribose nucleic acid, the sugar is ribose. This is the one prime position. Let us consider it as two prime position. In this two prime position, there is an OH group. There is an OH group in this particular sugar. This O is lacking in deoxyribose as the name indicates deoxy it means the elimination of oxygen. So in DNA the sugar don't have O at this 2 prime position and O is responsible for reactivity. Since the reactivity center is eliminated therefore DNA will be less reactive and if it will be less reactive therefore it will be much stable. So DNA is much stable and RNA is much reactive. So the DNA is genetic material in most of the organisms and RNA is genetic material in some of viruses. It is genetic material of a very small quantity of organisms which are mostly viruses. The DNA mostly acts as a genetic material but RNA has multiple function. It acts as messenger as you have heard about mRNA. So you know about it very well. It has catalytic role since it is much reactive due to the presence of this oxygen. So it also have catalytic role. It is also an adapter molecule. 
you will study it in some phenomena of RNA that is transcription so you will see there that how it act as an adapter so there are different functions of RNA that is the messenger as a catalytic role or as an adapter molecule so how do we calculate the length of different kind of genetic material the length of different kind of genetic material means the number of nucleotide or the nucleotide base pairs present in them so how do we calculate the length the number of nucleotide or the number of base pair simply indicate its length so for the length let us take some examples this phage this is kind of phage lambda phage is also a phage e coli that is escherichia coli and human being so we are going to take an example that how many nucleotide or nucleotidic base pairs are present in these kind of organisms so let us take the example of phi 174 so how can we memorize the number of nucleotides in it 1 and 7 you have to remember those number which are given in question because the name of that particular organism will also be given in question itself so 1 or 7 you have to memorize 5 3 so 1 plus 4 5 4 minus 1, 3, 7 plus 1, 8, 7 minus 1, 6. All the codes are in the question itself. 4 plus 1, 5, 4 minus 1, 3, 7 plus 1, 8, 7 minus 1, 6 nucleotides. In lambda, 50 minus 2 is equal to 48 or 48 plus 2 is equal to 50. You don't have to memorize anything. E. coli. You have to memorize 4 only because after this all the digits are same 4.6 this 6 we should have to put it here 10 to the power 6 and in human beings 3.3 into 10 to the power 9 so you have to memorize only 3 3.3 that is 3 into 3 is equal to 10 to the power 9 so now I am going to ask you a question that from these four organisms which of the following is single stranded organism or which of the following organism is having single stranded genetic material you have to answer me so most of you have not noticed a particular thing that these are base pair base pair base pair and this is nucleotide since it is nucleotide therefore it is not forming the base pairs base pairs is formed from two bases these are the nitrogenous bases which form base pair and if they are forming base pair therefore they are double stranded since they are forming or pairing with some other strand now so this is base pairs so they would be double stranded and this phage would be single stranded so this is all about the length of different kind of genetic materials which is equal to the number of nucleotides or base pair in cases of double stranded genetic material now what is the difference between nucleotide and nucleoside a very important question any sugar mostly sugar is pentose that is of 5 carbon that's why it is known as pentose if it is of 6 carbon it is known as hexose heptose and so on so the base that is nitrogenous bases since they contain nitrogen so the nitrogenous bases plus sugar forms nucleoside nitrogenous bases plus sugar forms nucleoside and nucleoside plus phosphate is equal to nucleotide and as we know that nucleotide is the monomer of nucleic acid so nucleotide would polymerize to form nucleic acid so simply nitrogenous base plus sugar is equal to nucleoside and nucleoside plus phosphate is equal to nucleotide so we are talking about some bases and these bases are divided into two different categories that are purines and pyrimidines so let us understand purine and pyrimidines so the purine as its name is small it will contain two rings one is of six carbon sorry six membered all of the organisms uh, sorry all of the positions are not carbon here it contains some nitrogens since the name indicates nitrogenous bases so it will contain some nitrogens at what positions it contain nitrogen it will contain nitrogens on 1 3 7 and 9 position 
one three seven nine, and it will contain pyrimidine is only a six member ring which will contain nitrogen is in one and three position. It will not contain nit any nitrogen in seventh and ninth position because there are no seventh and ninth positions. It is only a six membered ring. So this is the structure of purine. So we can understand this particular structure by the help of a very simple sentence that is naam bade or darshan chote. So if you have to draw a particular pyrimidine structure as the pyrimidine is a long name it will have a small structure but purine will have large structure in spite of having a very small name. So what are the different examples of purines and pyrimidines? Purines will have examples that is ag, ag that is fire and pyrimidines will have examples cut that is cytosine uracil and thymine and ag means adenine and guanine which are the different kind of nitrogenous bases so the bases are divided into nitrogenous bases are divided into purine and pyrimidine purine is formed up of two rings one is six membered and another one is five membered and this five membered ring is also known as imidazole imidazole ring so there are two rings which fuse to form nine positions since this two positions will be eliminated 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 only nine positions are there in spite of being 11 because these are 6 plus 5 because two positions fuse with each other and the second one that is pyrimidine will only have six positions as it is having a six membered ring so the purines will have nitrogen on 1379 positions and the pyrimidine will have nitrogens on 1 and 3 position since they have nitrogens that's why they are known as nitrogenous bases which interact with sugars to form nucleoside and the nucleoside interact with phosphate to form nucleotide so since the base is let us consider it as ribose and the sugars sorry uh, let the sugar be ribose and there are different kind of bases such as adenine thymine guanine cytosine uracil so what kind of nucleosides will they form they will form adenosine guanosine thymidine cytidine uridine if the sugar is deoxyribose then you have to put deoxyribose adenosine deoxyribose guanosine deoxyribose thymidine deoxyribose cytidine and deoxyribose uridine now let us study about the bonds that how they are interacted with each other the phosphate is present at the five prime end since we are talking about a particular strand if you are talking about linear genetic material there are two ends the one end would be called as 5 prime end which will contain a phosphate at its end and the another end will be 3 prime end that will contain a free OH group free OH group of sugar at 3 prime position that's why it is known as 3 prime end and at 5 prime position the phosphate group is not interacted with any other group that's why it is free at 5 prime end so Firstly, we will talk about the nucleoside. Since nitrogenous base and sugar interact with each other to form nucleoside, they are connected with a bond that is known as N-glycosidic bond. Why it is known as N-glycosidic bond? Because this bond is formed by the nitrogen of nitrogenous bases. Therefore, it is called as N-glycosidic bond which is interacting with sugar molecule. And the another bond is phosphoester bond which is interacting the phosphate molecule with the sugar moiety the sugar is interacting with phosphate with the phosphoester bond remember it phosphoester not phosphodiester so the sugar is interacting with phosphate with phosphoester bond and the sugar is interacting with nitrogenous base 2 with an glycosidic bond so since nitrogenous basis plus sugar is equal to nucleoside and that particular nucleoside plus phosphate is equal to nucleotide so this is a nucleotide and this nucleotide will interact with another nucleotide by the help of another bond that is phosphodiester bond which is formed between 3 prime and 5 prime ends since it is a 5 prime end and this is a free end such as this this is also having an OH group since that particular position is interacting with another phosphate to form a dye molecule that is dinucleotide.
since two nucleotides are interacting with each other this is a particular nucleotide and this is also a nucleotide since they are interacting with the help of phosphodiester bond to form dinucleotide after that they can form trinucleotide tetranucleotide and then a nucleotidic chain which is known as nucleic acid because the nucleotides polymerizes to form nucleic acid 